Hey everybody, this is Jordan, the Diabetes Educator, and today I wanted to talk with all of you about counting carbohydrates. And I want to look at why that's important, how that can help you get the correct insulin dose, and um, how we're actually going to be able to do that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. So when you're counting your carbohydrates, you're always going to start by looking at the top at the serving size. Now notice in this example here, it says serving size one cup. This one cup is talking about a measuring cup. Now, if you don't have access to a measuring cup, you can always use your fist. Now, your fist is going to be about the size of a measuring cup. It's not perfect, but it's a good estimate if you're in a situation where you don't have that measuring cup. If you don't have measuring cups, I'd highly recommend that you go out and get some. You can go to um, pretty much any Dollar Tree or any kind of um, grocery store. They should have measuring cups available there for you. Uh, but it's very important that you know your serving size because this is going to set up everything else going forward and reading this nutrition label. Now step two of reading a nutrition label is going to be looking at the servings per container. It might say something like servings per box or servings per portion, um, but just be looking at this here. Now you'll notice here that it says two servings per container in this example. This means that we have two cups in this entire container. That is very important because if you have the entire container in this example, you're having two cups and you will have to account for that when you're looking at your total carbohydrates. So very, very important to make sure you know the servings per container and you know the, the amount of servings that you are eating when you are counting your carbohydrates. Now at step three, we are going to be looking at the total carbohydrate itself. Now in this example, we see that it says 31 grams. This is including all three types of carbohydrate, which are starch, sugar, and fiber. That is important to know because many people are prone to counting the sugars or counting the fiber, but they forget that the total carbohydrate includes all three of those. So it's very important to be looking at the total carbohydrate and not just isolating it down to a fiber or just a sugar. You have to be looking at the total carbohydrate. So now we move to the final step, which is step four which would be subtracting fiber from the total carbohydrates if you are using net carbohydrates for your calculations. So you might be asking, what are net carbohydrates? Well, net carbohydrates are the total carbohydrate minus the types of carbohydrate um, or substances that do not impact the glucose level significantly. So although fiber is a carbohydrate, only about 50% of the fiber that we eat is going to be digestible. And this means that it's going to have a much less um, impact on your blood sugars compared to something like a sugar or a starch. So some people use net carbohydrates for their calculations. It doesn't work for everybody. So if this is something that you're interested in, you might wanna consider talking to your doctor first before implementing this in your own diabetes management. So as we wrap up this video here, just a few reminders. If you were having multiple servings, be sure you are accounting for each serving. Each serving will have its own amount of carbohydrates. So if you fail to account for this, you will be eating more carbohydrates than you are intending, and this will lead to high blood sugars. Additionally, remember that there are three types of carbohydrates, starch, sugar, and fiber. So if you are only counting the sugars or only counting the fibers, you are missing out on the other type of carbohydrates that can impact your blood sugars. Something else that I did not mention in step four if you are counting your net carbohydrates, you may also be looking at something called sugar alcohols. Now sugar alcohols will not raise your blood sugars like normal sugar would. So you are able to subtract them from the total carbohydrates if you are using the net carbohydrates for your calculations. So now that you've learned the basics of carb counting, you can apply this to your diabetes management in ways that will help you better control your blood sugar. So for example, many people use something called an insulin to carbohydrate ratio. What that means is they will count their carbohydrates to get the exact amount of grams that they're eating, and then they will dose their insulin based on those grams. So for myself, as someone who has type 1 diabetes, I currently use a 1 to 10 insulin to carb ratio. So what that means is I take one unit of insulin for every 10 grams of carbohydrate. This allows you to have a little bit more flexibility and it allows you to get the correct insulin dose that your body truly needs so that you can achieve good blood sugar results. If this is something you'd be interested in, I would recommend that you talk with your physician or your trusted provider 
and then it can help set this up for you. If you enjoyed this video and want to have more content like this, feel free to check out my page, The Diabetic Merce, on Instagram or Facebook. Thanks for watching.